Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is short subject number 23, entitled, What is a Hook Ruler? And I have here an example of about eight different hook rules out of my toolbox, and they're a mighty handy little tool if you don't have one, so let's talk about a few ways of using them, and then all of the different types here, the variations and the advantages and the designs of them. You might be saying to yourself, I sure wish I had one of those hook rulers. Well, you do. Everybody's got a dozen of these hook rulers around their house for measuring, but I consider these for semi-accurate work. Oh, how my dad used to get mad when we would pick his tape roller up that was sitting by his chair and aimlessly and childlessly do this over and over until this broke, and uh, then he was not real happy. So a hook rule is real handy for something like this. Rather than just using a regular rule, you can be assured that you're right at the edge. Also notice that that's a bit of a knife edge on this particular one. These hook rules would be real handy if you're working with uh, tubing or pipes because you're, you can catch the end just like that, and you might have steps or grooves in here, and that would allow you to measure that length if you were on the lathe. So, a lot of uses. I don't use these as often as I thought I would, simply because they're not on the bench, out of sight, out of mind. This is the Lufkin catalog, a real old one, and they show quite a few different types of hook rules. Now, at the end of this video, for extra credit, I'll put some still pictures from the three major companies, Lufkin, Brown and & Sharp, and Sterrett. Printers and typesetters have been using hook rules for many, many years. Matter of fact, several hundred years. These are called pica sticks. And here's the question of the day. How many points in a pica? Both loggers and lumbermen use a hook rule to determine board feet from logs, and that's how they price them out. So it, uh, they have a metal end on them that makes them very robust because they'd be out in the forest and in the woods with them. I'm sure plenty of you guys out there have a zigzag rule, folding rule like this, and this one has a couple, it's all tricked out. It's got the extension on this side and a hook on this side, of course, this is meant for woodworking and carpentry, and the hook folds out of the way. How awesome is that? Raise your hand if you have one of these. Some hook rules just have a single hook on one side. Others have a double hook, so you can catch it from either side. But let me show you some unique things about some of these rules. I keep wanting to say rulers, but I get chewed out when I say that. So if you would loosen up this screw, and it's an eccentric, so you don't have to loosen it up very much, and you can slide the hook out of the way, or give yourself an extra big hook, like that, real wide here, and that little tab right up here at the top is to keep you from losing this, so it's captive, pretty well thought out, and that is a brown and sharp. I want to show you something I think is interesting here. This is a Lufkin, and again, it has the knife edge. And the reason it's the knife edge, because this is relatively thick here. And you might be wanting to get into a groove, but this particular one has a blade. It's rather thick right here, but the blade is thinned down. And this one is set up. This is a Sterrett. You can remove these attachments. Matter of fact, sometimes they're sold separately. This is, of course, for drill grinding. This is a real nice satin chrome rule. PEC stands for Precision Engineering Corporation. It's satin chrome. Most of my other ones are not satin chrome. It also is set up with a drill grind, grinding gauge. Don't confuse it with the Sterrett that I just showed you, but a little bit of a variation here. If you loosen up this eccentric screw, just a half a turn or so, you can slide this one way or the other, or take the darn thing out, and put, but you will lose it. 
So do not take it out. I'm sure this is hardened and ground. Very nicely made. You know, this brand you don't see very often. I'm not sure they're still made, but they are extremely high quality. While I'm at it here, I thought I'd show you how this little screw works on most of these. There is no thread. Let me pull that out again. You see there's a hole on the end of the rule. No threads at all. It's just counterboard on the one side and this little screw here. Boy, that doesn't show up too well, does it? It's just black as a lump of coal. coal. But it is an eccentric on the back side. And that's what does the tightening. While getting ready for this video, I found this end in my toolbox. Just in a junk, junk drawer that I had, I guess. But it appears to be a steric. Lufkin made kind of an unusual hook rule. We have a little knurled screw right there. And that allows us to remove the hook. Now, of course, one is going to lose that or flip it around. You know, that's, that's the purpose, probably not to take it off. But the screw is captive. That will not come out. Which is a good idea. Why would you want to reverse the hook, you're saying? Because you may want it uh, set for these graduations here. 30 seconds. If you wanted 60 fourths, of course, you would flip it around 180 degrees. Same thing on this side. Here's a steric depth gauge with a hook rule. And these little narrow rules are real handy for some work. And I've got another one right here without the depth stop. So they sold them this way. Again, here's a Lufkin. And the unusual thing about this is that this is a 9-inch ruler. I had no idea they made 9-inch rulers. And at first I thought someone cut it off. But of course it's got the end graduations. And then I looked in the Lufkin catalog, and sure enough, they made them in several sizes, 6 and 9 and 12, and I think longer as well. Well, this 9-inch Lufkin was originally owned by Bubba, and he used it as a hammer. Kind of looks like a little tack hammer, even. Well, that completes my little short subject video on hook rules. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you do not have one of these, be sure and pick up a few. I don't know if you can get them at Menards. You probably have to get them from an industrial supplier or from Feebay. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. And be sure and stick around and watch all of the still pictures, of which there are many, including the catalog pictures. I'll see you next time.